I'm a New Yorker, and, and uh, even when I'm walking uh, in Barcelona, which has very different architecture, or Madrid, there's this, um, this energy uh, uh, that I recognize of, of people who are, um, may hate each other, but they're stuck with each other, and um, sometimes that's a city. We start off in the first scene in Lower Manhattan in a neighborhood called Radio Row, which was a three or four blocks filled with stores catering to radio and TV hobbyists. So you're into radio, you need a new part, you come down there. And it was a busy, hustling part of the city. And it was completely erased and destroyed to make the World Trade Center. Um, and of course, reading it in 2022, 2023, we know that something, something will happen to the World Trade Center. There'll be, once again, a crater for waiting for to be filled, and something else will take its place. So that replenishment, uh, that uh, being laid low and destroyed and then remade is part of New York. And it's also part of our personal experience. You know, we, we go through life, we have failures, uh, we have successes, um, uh, we're knocked down, we get up again. And so uh, that there's that parallel movement between people's lives and, and, cities, and the city's lives, and I'm trying to get that into the book as well. It takes place in the, the 1960s, and my parents were a young married couple then uh, trying to raise a family. Um, I didn't use them as a resource. I was sort of foolish, but I would, do, I would write a certain scene and then tell my mother, oh, I was writing about the chock full of nuts in this place called the Hotel Teresa. Have you heard of it? And she's like, yeah, I... I had coffee there every morning. Um, so I should have used her, but I didn't. Um, I love New York and really, and I'm supposed to be a real Harlem rah-rah cheerleader, but it's just another neighborhood I like um, with its uh, uh, strengths and, and flaws. Um, I like downtown, I like Brooklyn, I like Harlem. Um, I've never really hung out there, uh, gone drinking and, and eating um, that much. Uh, my research was walking around the avenues, in addition to what else I mentioned, uh, doing location scouting. You know, is this a good spot for a murder? Is this a good, stop, a good place to dump a body or put a, a gambling joint? I want to populate this neighborhood, and uh, there's a big supporting cast. There are actually three, three different stories in the book, and so every 110 pages, the story reboots and brings in uh, some new players with their own stories and desires. Um, I've written a lot about the city. It's my, it's my hometown, and um, I try to have a different approach each time. So my first book, The Intuitionist, uh, takes place in an allegorical New York City um, out of sort of film noir myth. Um, Zone One, my zombie apocalypse novel, uh, takes place in an almost utopian New York because everyone's dead and there's no competition for taxis or lines and super supermarkets. And then um, I wanted to have a realistic uh, portrayal of New York in this book. So I meant going back to, to newspapers and, and, uh, and uh, photo archives. If you go to YouTube and put in Harlem 1964, you'll find somebody has uploaded their grandparents' um, eight millimeter film reel that they took one day when strolling. And for someone like me, who's looking for sort of tangible uh, bits of proof uh, that I know what I'm talking about. I can take the price of a ham sandwich from a window in the background. Um, are people wearing hats? At a certain moment, men stopped wearing hats in the late 50s, early 60s. So when is that moment? Is it 61, 64? So, um, so research was, was really fun, uh, just because I was discovering so much about my town. And then also it feeds the book. It always depends on, on the project. Um, I have a, a book about being a teenager in the 1980s called Sag Harbor. And the research for that book is just going to Wikipedia, finding out when this Tears for Fear song came out. Was it 84 or 85? <laughs> and sort of fact-checking my memories. Um, with these historical novels I've been writing, starting with Underground Railroad, um, I find primary sources are the, the, the best resource. Um, so how do people talk? I can go to their memoirs, whether it's a memoir of a former slave or a memoir of a gangster or a hustler. Uh, William Burroughs, a uh, famous beat writer, uh, one of his first books is called Junkie, and it's about being a hustler in, in Manhattan in the 1940s, 1950s, and has a, it's a great 
uh, source of slang and uh, underworld cop slang. Uh, going to a newspaper, you know, 1961, Mayor Robert Wagner is being reelected, so I can maybe use that as a plot point. Uh, and on, one, on the other page of the newspaper, there's an ad for furniture, and my main character is a furniture salesman, so I can steal language from um, of a mid-century modern furniture advertisement. So um, whether it's going to Pinterest, because someone has uploaded a furniture catalog from 1959, a newspaper archive, or a memoir, I'm stealing all this language and, and using it to furnish my own New York. I start writing when I'm really excited. You know, I've done enough research, not everything. Um, I can always stop and do some more if the book goes down a different avenue. Um, but I've been researching and plotting and planning for months and months and months. And on a certain day, I know that I want to start going. I'm really excited. And I don't know everything, but I know, my, I know enough to start those first few pages. Well, I mean, he starts off uh, mostly on the straight and narrow, Ray Carney, the main character. And then as he gives himself over to uh, his criminal inclinations, he sees more and more of the city. That's kind of secret city. Um, he passes a stationary store. He's walked by a thousand times. And then a corrupt cop will tell him, oh, that's where the gambling joint is, or this place is a, a drug front. Um, so, and the, the reader is along for the ride as we get this tour of the, the secret New York, the one uh, that lives behind uh, these innocent facades. Um, there's a, a bit in the book about uh, nighttime and what happens at nighttime when all the decent people go to sleep. Um, you know, as a writer, definitely when I was younger, I would have a, a second shift of, of work. I might write from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m., preparing the next day's work. And you look out the window, and um, there's like one light on. And the only people up at that hour are writers, criminals, alcoholics, and insomniacs. So there's this whole secret city uh, that's um, uh, being built when everyone else is asleep. And I'm trying to capture some of that.